Hey guys, in this video I want to go ahead and cover some of the changes made to the projectile system. Now, as you can kind of assume, we now have ricochets and basic penetration. So the overall idea behind this was basically to make the provided projectiles to the framework a little more feature complete, so they're more usable. And not just, well, before, one, they were a little bit inefficient, especially at startup, and two, they were uh, very basic. So whenever they hit something, they would basically destroy themselves. Whereas now the destroying is up to you unless you go through the ricochet counter, which I'll show you here in a bit. However, I still do recommend other people's projectile systems. So like generally I recommend something like easy ballistics. However, this does allow you to basically have a more feature complete projectile system kind of out of the box. And there's a projectile system I'll talk about at the end of the video that I'm going to recommend that is up and coming. And that is basically going to be my future recommendation from now on. But anyways, to begin here, we now have ricochets and penetration. So to start with the logic, here if the hit angle is greater than 15 degrees, we want to perform a ricochet. Otherwise, we based off of our projectile or our hit object thickness, we want to penetrate and slow down our velocity. So to give you a rough idea on what that looks like, here I can penetrate through. So bright red means projectile is pretty much at full speed. And you can see it goes through and it drastically slows down because it ends up hitting that wall. So it loses a lot of velocity before it finally hits and starts pinging through. Whereas if I shoot straight through, basically that projectile is just going to be launching all the way down here and only slowing down just a little bit. So you can hear where we have the initial uh, ricochet off the floor. Then we have the greater than 15 degrees. So we start pinging off through here. So we follow the path and we end up in this corner. Now, I do have a ricochet counter kind of set up by default, so max ricochets, which I have set to four by default, but if we bump this up to 50, then as you can kind of imagine, we're gonna end up with quite a lot. So if I shoot through here, we'll just kind of see where everything goes. Oh, good grief. All right, well, that one went to the moon. But you can kind of get a rough idea on the way everything goes. Now I'm going to go ahead and kind of cover the example logic here. So basically we now have more parameters into the on-projectile impact. And the idea behind these changes were to not really just have you configure stuff and have the system take care of it. It's more so to have you call what you want, use what you want, when and how you want it. Because that's kind of the whole idea behind the framework itself is for really not being tied down into my ways, but being able to make your own unique well, game out of it, pretty much. So now we have object thickness. So this is the thickness of the hit object, obviously. So this guy's like 40 centimeters. This guy is, I think, 16 or 18. This guy, just for the cardboard, is like 0.7, something like that, centimeters thick. And for the penetration, what all happens is we want to normalize that. So anything greater than 20 means we are not going to penetrate. So this guy being like 17, we'll just say 17 centimeters, this will penetrate. This being 40 centimeters will not penetrate. It'll stop in its tracks because of how thick it is. So for example, I can shoot through this guy. You can see the projectile go through, ricochet off, but if I shoot at an angle here, you can see it doesn't go through, it just kind of stops in there. So that's the idea behind it. So from there, what we're going to do is because we have the velocity multiplier, we want to slow the projectile down based upon the thickness of what was hit. Now, this is where you can have it be influenced by other things. For example, right here, we have the physical material, so you can get its surface type and run a switch on it, which I have none in the example because I use my own system for it. Or you can use basically my own, well, system for dictating what that might be. So based upon surface type, so for example, different types of metal. So if you have something extremely hard like AR500 or AR550, then you might not want really any penetration, even though it is maybe two centimeters thick. Whereas if you have something like some soft steel, you may want some penetration through that, even though it is four centimeters thick. But you're going to have a lot of velocity loss, that kind of thing. So it's kind of dictated by how you want to configure it. But with the example here, we want to check. So if we are, if what we hit is greater than 20 centimeters, we're just not going to do anything. 
And the reason we're subtracting it from one is because based upon our value here, which I can kind of show you. So if we take one and we subtract this from, let's say we have a, uh, let's see, what, let's do a print string and I'll show you the thickness. So if we have a 17 centimeter thick wall, the return value from the normal bit being normalized is gonna be 0 0.85. So we take one, subtract that, or subtract 0 0.85 from it, we're left with 0 0.15, and that's gonna be used to drive our multiplier here. So because it's 0 0.15, that basically means we're plugging in 0 0.15 into our velocity multiplier, so 0 0.15, so we are drastically gonna be slowing the projectile down. So if I hit this guy now, you can see projectile goes extremely slow. If I hit this guy, it's gonna be basically the exact same path because it's, well, the velocity multiplier is gonna be the exact same. So the lower the velocity multiplier, the more it gets slowed down. The higher it is, so if it's at one, then it has no effect on it whatsoever. So that's kind of that idea behind here. So perform ricochet just has a relatively high velocity multiplier. So you do lose a little bit of velocity, but not by much if you, well, have a ricochet. So you could base this based upon angle. So for example, if we're at something like 15 degrees, so it's a relatively sharp angle, but still enough in this case to ricochet, we would want something lower, like let's say 0.6 because it's going to be coming in at a sharper angle. Whereas if we hit something like, let's see, or sorry, not 15 degrees, I got that backwards. Let's say we're hitting something like 80 degrees, no, 75 degrees. Let me bring up something for to visualize. All right, so here in this beautiful little uh, doom jigger here, didn't bother looking for one without radiance, but basically if we're hitting head on, you're going to draw. Oh, cool, doesn't want to draw. There it goes. So if we're hitting something head on, we're basically gonna be at zero degrees. So here's an example of being head on. So we're not gonna have a ricochet. So that's at 2.6 degrees. If I go down just a little bit, uh, we're getting pretty close. So we're at, well, around two degrees and we're hitting it head on. But if I go through and I go at a really sharp angle, we're gonna be not 90, but pretty close. So here we went at 87 degrees. There's a little sharper. Here we're at 83 degrees, so on and so on. So if we hit, basically we just barely skimmed the wall, so we're at 80 something degrees. We're gonna be, I am doing a horrible job here. We're gonna be somewhere along the lines of this. So this is basically like a straight, so 90 degrees would basically be a, we are flush with whatever we hit. So based upon your angle here, so if we have a less of an angle, I guess in this case, technically more of an angle. So we're hitting at, let's say 80 something degrees. So when we hit this target here, we're pinging off it like this. You might want very, just very little, or I guess you could say a velocity multiplier close to one. So something like 0 0.9, 0 0.95. But if you're hitting something relatively sharp, such as like this, where you might only be at, you know, 15, 20 degrees, you might want to have a value something like 0 0.65, you know, give or take. So it's relatively flexible. The idea is meant for you to have pretty good control over it. But in the end, still up to you to figure out how you want to use it. But on top of that, we do have some optimizations. So the main performance killer was, again, this projectile system was from a plugin that I released at least maybe, it might actually almost be four years ago now. And it was very primitive. And for example, one of the big problems that I had was it initially went through and would try to get the, uh, basically every projectile that was spawned, it would parse through all the actors and find a wind directional source. Obviously, as you can imagine, that would be extremely inefficient. This one just has a world subsystem that goes ahead and gets the wind sources for you. And it reads directly from that subsystem instead. So there's no more getting all actors of class. Now it just basically reads directly from the subsystem still caches the wind source and uses it really as it needs it. So that's pretty much it. Now in regards to the recommended projectile systems, 
So someone in our Discord is actually just submitted theirs for approval as of, I think it was like a day or two ago. But anyways, that is going to, I don't want to leak too much, but I will have a separate video on it, but it's going to basically be probably the most in-depth projectile system as well as probably the best performing of any on the marketplace. Like in my opinion, from what I've seen and after kind of having him walk me through and everything and talking about it, it's going to be probably the end-all be-all projectile system on the marketplace, period. I can't really imagine anyone topping it. So one, everything runs on its own thread. There's no actual physical projectile, but you do get a, you know, I'll just leave it for a surprise. But anyways, just imagine a crazy in-depth in terms of what you can do with it, along with incredibly performant for what you get to do with it projectile system. That's going to be my future recommendation moving forwards, and I will be having videos on it, integrating it with the system, and uh, just talking about it. But anyways, that's going to be all, and I'll see you in the next video.